Hello there, I'm A1 Sirius, and uh, this tutorial is on creating fire with Blender. We'll first look at what we're about to do. This is a rendered result of what we're about to do. So if this is what you're interested in, you're welcome. Let's open up Blender here. We're using Blender 2.7. And here we have the default cube, and I'll scale that up because I would like to use that as my domain. And that means that I will go to the physics tab and click on smoke and domain. Then press one to look at this from the front. I would also like to add those logs, shift A, a, a cylinder, scale that down and scale that longer along the z-axis like that and there you go and then rotate that along the y-axis 45 degrees and go to the physics tab click smoke and flow and here use fire and that's all I need and I need three of these so what I'm going to do here is actually this. I'll look at this from the top and uh, zoom out a little bit, and then I'll move this out of outside of the domain because it's easier to work with things outside. Otherwise, you keep clicking on the domain, and I do Shift D for duplication, and then R Z 120, and then the same thing again. Shift D R Z 220 that way okay we'll just um, and I'll just gonna pull this uh, just pull this uh, like that and like this and like that okay just select all of that and move that into the domain so now we have the flow elements and the domain and I would also like uh, my Suzanne to be the viewer here. Uh, and I'll just pick her up from another file, append. And uh, we have used her previously. So I'm just appending her from, from another file, it's easier. So I don't have to do all the, the the material work on her. Okay. I'll take a look at this from the front, and if we click on the the domain and look at the smoke cache, it's grayed out because we haven't saved the file yet. So I'll just uh, press F two. And uh, we'll go to Fire Tutorial and call that my toot. So now we have saved it and we can bake the simulation. So I'll just press that. And you can see that this ticks on pretty quickly because this is a low resolution bake. And uh, I'm just going to let this run to completion and we can look at it. by playing it. And the, as you can see, this is a, it's a lower resolution. The, the vorticity isn't all that noticeable. So I would actually like to um, free that bake and uh, change here to smoke high resolution and that's all I, I just click that and then I'll bake that and this is much slower personally I like these flames better and uh, I'll just pause so that we can come back when it's finished now the bake is complete and we can uh, look at it and maybe it's not completely obvious but there's a it's a finer uh, vorticity in this flame here which makes it look a little bit more realistic
and then if you would like to re we can uh, move that up to some suitable uh, frame and then we can press F12 to try to render it and we just get black because we haven't given our domain any material uh, and of course I would like to add a camera here shift A and a camera grab ZZ and control zero and view to that camera grab ZZ again and come a little bit closer like that and I would like to change the horizon color And now we'll start with the material for the actual flame. And for smoke and flame, you have to have a volumetric material for the domain. And it needs to be zero density. And uh, we'll use about four, something higher than one. You can manipulate that to get you know different results. I also like to increase the emissions a little bit and we can't see any effects of this material at all right now we'll, because we need to add some um, textures. First we will need to add uh, a smoke texture and it must be voxel data and it has to use the domain that we used And if we turn that on down here, density emissions, emission color, and press F12, then we'll get this. But I'm not interested in the smoke per se, so I'll just turn all these off. And if we render that, we get nothing. So that's what we get there. But I'll also have to, or since I want the flames, I want to add another texture that is also voxel data. There you go and also uses, of course, the domain. And I would like the flame to be its source. I'll keep the intensity and density and all of that the way it is. We'll start to manipulate that just shortly. But first, we'll add colors. Uh, it's a color ramp. And the very first position is this, which is black and completely transparent and the last or or second in this case position here if we go there it's white and completely opaque and I'll pull that down to around 4 0 0.4 and I would like to add some uh, color steps from the transparent black to uh, semi semi opaque white here and white is you know a white hot flame so the intensity the higher intensity you get the whiter it gets and that intensity is you know this parameter here I just keep that at one for now and just to add the, the steps uh, first step I would like to have yellow like this and keep this about 0 0.4 around that and move that down there and then add another one that it needs to be orange so crank that up and take that down a little bit and such and move that over to here and then a red one And finally, a blue one. And it's going to be less, more transparent, a lower alpha value. So we render that, and, uh, and that's what we get. And now I'd like to change that a little bit. 
uh, those colors. So one of the things I can do is that I can increase the intensity that will move it over more to the white. So let's say I increase the intensity by a couple steps there. That's a little bit too white maybe, but um, let's go back one step and then I could uh, lower the density down to something like that, 0 0.2, something like that, and try that. Can actually go down even further. There you go, and uh, increase the intensity. go back to the material maybe and lower the emission to five that's what that does so this way you can work with the the flame material um, to get it just where you want it and I'll turn on ray trace I think that's gonna make it a little bit a little bit softer yeah well this one thing that I forgot okay and that is this um, we have a linear, uh, it's, a, it's a linear um, interpolation, so I use B-spline instead, and the same is true here, I use cubic B-spline down there, and we'll press F12, and you can see that it's much softer and more delicate flame. So this is what I was looking for, and you can see that um, our Suzanne here is completely uh, without illumination, um, I think I want to decrease this a little bit more is to because if you have opacity on that last step you can see that now it's not bleeding over now it looks like you can't see the domain which is what I wanted and uh, uh, Suzanne is not illumined so we need a light for that and I need a light that works well with this so I'll go back to the very start so we don't... Okay, that's a good place for the cursor to be. So now I just add a, a point light. Um, and we can just uh, look at that and say, okay, that's uh, sufficient illumination there, but we would like the point light to flicker. So we'll open up the um, animation and I'll choose that and uh, so there and I'll just go to this editor and open that up in full control up arrow so uh, at um, frame number one we have this value I think I would like to lower that but before that I'll go to frame number 10 and insert uh, another handle there and then I'll click on that and then I grab that and take that down to about 0 2 or something like that so now it's going to be pay, uh, you know um, more dim and then get brighter and I would like it to flicker down maybe there this is something of course that you'd have to work with uh, you know to try to learn you know what looks natural and not this is just the method it's this is not the you know the the completely desired end result um, and we go there and we insert that and then we can just go to a channel and extrapolate mode make cyclic so now you get this kind of flickering light goes up and down a little bit. And I go back to the default. So now it's a little bit dimmer. Now it's a little bit brighter. Just, you know, going over the uh, the timeline here. So those are the elements that we 
we need to create fire. We need the domain, and it has uh, a volumetric material that has at least two uh, textures. You have to have the smoke texture, even if you're not using it. You still have to have it, and uh, and the flame texture, which has a color ramp to create the the colors in the flame. You can use the uh, the intensity and density to change characteristics of the flame, and of course you can use other parameters too, but these are two very useful uh, and easy to work with um, parameters. And I, I was using the mixed blend here. You can other use other blend for, uh, methods. Uh, I'm just going to do this and you can take a look at And for instance, and see how that works. Then you get a much brighter, and and, and you can see it now. You can see the um, domain a lot more. Um, try to subtract. Then you get nothing. So you, this is something that you can, you know, work with. You just, um, you know through a trial and error you figure out you know what works for you in terms of the you know the different blends because it, it, it depends a little bit on your densities and emissions and all the other um, parameters that you can use you can crank up this and see what you get with a lower density and a higher emission you get something to look like um, you know fog so and when you work with the materials it's easy to get kind of lost and mess up and you find yourself with nothing so it's a good thing to keep saving your files so you can you know have some baseline to go back to and before we quit i just going to play the you know the final render again You can see the flickering light. You know, it might be look very mechanical. You can probably do a better job of, you know, making it look like an actual, you know, frick, flicker, flickering fire. And also, it, you know, it ends up at the, you know, top of the domain. You can uh, work with the flames to make them smaller, smaller flame size. I just want to look at that. And not not here, but in here, and um, not the free the bake, I think. Yep, here the speed. So if I can, if I free the bake, here the speed. If I have a lower value there, 0 0.1, I get smaller flames. So. Um, I'll get back to that in the next tutorial that is a little bit more about controlling the flame and uh, getting you know making uh, the fire do what you want it to do so I hope you enjoyed this I hope you'll find it useful and I talk to you soon bye bye